Hello, I'm Julie Wilson, the pastor here of Mount Horeb United Methodist Church. And along with my clergy colleagues from around the area, I want to welcome you to this service of lament. Over the past few months, our lives have changed dramatically. A few months ago, actually six months to be exact, we heard of something called COVID-19 or coronavirus, and our lives have been forever changed. Now, things like grabbing our face mask on the way out the door are part of our everyday routine. Words like social distancing and drive-by birthday parties have become part of our vocabulary. And while I am excited and I celebrate the many ways that we are being creative and living in this difficult time, it's also been a difficult time. And tonight we want to offer a space where we can acknowledge the difficulties that we have been facing. When we can acknowledge the pain and the sorrow and the loss that we have experienced over the last six months. As we go about our service tonight, we're going to name some of those losses out loud. There might be others that you're feeling in your heart and we invite you to name those to God as well. We want to have this time to grieve because we do grieve. We grieve the lives that have been lost. We grieve the loss of so many other things as well. And so tonight, this is a space for us to sit in our grief for a little bit, to come to God in prayer, in sorrow, in lament. You know, the scriptures are filled with joyous celebrations and it's also filled with lament. It's filled with places where people have cried out to God in their hurting. And that's what we're doing tonight. Psalm 22 might sound familiar to you. It's one that Jesus said from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer and by night find no rest. Tonight we cry out to God. We come together in grief, acknowledging our losses. I especially want to lift up the losses of lives that we've experienced. Some of us have lost family members. Some of us have lost close friends. Some just acquaintances. And some we've lost people in our church family. I know here in Mount Horeb, we've lost several of our church family members the last few months. And it's hard. It's hard when you can't be with people when they're dying. It's hard when you can't be with your family and your friends and grieve with them. When an elbow bump has to do instead of a hug. When we have to wipe our own tears because we don't tear, dare touch each other's faces when our funerals or celebrations of life are limited to only a few people, it's difficult. And so tonight we want to grieve and think about those people we have lost in our lives, those people in our church families, those friends and neighbors, and those who we just wanted to reach out to and say hello to one more time and aren't able to. Those friends of ours who are grieving and we want to sit with them so badly, we want to offer our sympathy, and yet we can't do it in the way that we are accustomed to. Tonight, we offer that to God. We offer that hurt and that sorrow. Let us pray. God of love, hear our pain this night. Hear our grief. Sit with us in our sorrow. Be with our friends and family members who are hurting. Help them to feel your presence even as we would like to be with them. Oh God, for those of us who are deeply grieving, we pray for your presence. We pray that we can feel your spirit with us. We pray for your healing touch. We pray that those that we have lost will never ever fade in our memories. We give thanks for the part of them that is part of us. And we give thanks for your unending love. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is Jason Mankey, and I'm the pastor of People's United Methodist Church in Oregon, Wisconsin. And I'd like to take a moment to reflect with you 
on the loss of celebrations that we've all experienced during this time of COVID. Now, ask anybody who knows me, and they'll tell you I love a good party. I love celebrations. I love to be able to get together with friends and families and celebrate all of the good things of life and get to be around the people that I love the most and get to know new people as well. Well, I know that's one of the more difficult things about this pandemic is the loss of celebration. Now, some of the celebrations we've been able to adjust and still have, I think of my daughter Macy and her dance recital. Her dance studio actually came to the church and had a socially distanced um, dance recital in the church's parking lot. And it was different, but it was still fun and joyous. But then there are those celebrations that we strive to do differently that while we mean the best and we're trying hard, still feel a little bit hollow and aren't exactly what we'd like. I think of the drive through birthday parties, the drive through anniversaries, and the virtual graduations. While it's good to see people from a distance and honk horns and wave and, and give presents and hold up signs, what we really long for is to embrace one another to sing happy birthday, to celebrate the important milestones together in person, not over a computer. And then there are those celebrations that have just had to be put off or changed so dramatically that they don't reflect what our dreams for them were. I think of the weddings that have been postponed for a year, year and a half, or the weddings that have become micro weddings and in attendance only have about 25 people, not the hundreds of people who were there to celebrate the love of the new couple and the plan for in a year, year and a half, larger um, reception where people can celebrate. And that can be very heartbreaking and very hard. While both meaningful and something people will remember, it is a huge adjustment and can be full of sadness and loss. Well, during such times, we sometimes want to shove the sadness away to say, you know what, we made the best of it and just move on. But I'd encourage you not to shove those feelings, but really to sit with them for a few moments and actually to offer them to God so you can experience God's love and God's healing. God wants to share and heal the loss that you've experienced. I think of the Psalms, which is one of my favorite books of the Bible, and the way that the book of Psalms so readily um, expresses these feelings of sadness and loss. I think of Psalm 102 that uh, reads, my heart is stricken and withered like grass. Because of my loud groaning, my bones cling to my skin. I am like an owl of the wilderness, like a little owl of waste of the waste places. And this line especially, I, I relate to at this time, I lie awake. I am like a lonely bird on the housetop. How many times have I felt lonely and sad because I just want to be with the people I love. Well, know, my friends, that God can handle your sadness. God wants to walk with you through the loss that you're experiencing. And I invite you to offer up, like the psalmist, God, to God your feelings this day. Would you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, one of the greatest things in life is the ability to celebrate with the people that we love. The milestones, the occasions, the birthdays, the weddings, the graduations, the anniversaries, where we get to be with the people that we love. And our heart, hearts hurt, our hearts ache because we are missing those times. As much as we try and adjust 
it's just not the same. And we're left feeling hollow and empty and depressed. We feel like a lonely bird on a housetop. Lord, first we ask that you hear our sadness, hear our pain. Remind us that you walk with us during these difficult times. And give us hope and trust that there will be a time again where we're able to celebrate, where we're able to embrace our loved ones, where it, we're where we're able to sing with one another and laugh and enjoy the good things of life. And in the meantime, give us healing through your love and grace. Amen. I close my eyes to see my King in majesty your grace compels my soul to love and draw you close. I lift my hands and sing, surrender everything. In you I know I'm found. My God. part of this service. My name is Scott Walters. I am the pastor at the Crossroads United Methodist Church in Wanakee, Wisconsin. And my part of the service this evening is the sense of loss that I think many of us have experienced and the sense of loss of community during this time of COVID. Uh, I am reminded quite often as I've been thinking about preparing for this of the scripture reading at the end of the Gospel of Luke in which these two men leave on Easter day after a wild day of Easter morning on their way to a town called Emmaus and their conversations between each other and then a third person that joins them on the way and uh, lo and behold that person becomes Jesus but on their way they they share these words they say as they came near to the village to which they were going and he, meaning Jesus, walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, 
and the day now nearly over. So he went on to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. There is something here, I think, that is so specific to that particular moment in the lives of those two disciples. Two disciples who were themselves uh, experiencing their own loss of community. The loss of a community of the person whom they were following for uh, as disciples of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus seemingly needing an ignominious end on the cross, not realizing what had really transpired on Easter morning. And yet, at the same time, these two were realizing that they experienced a loss of friendship of their own disciples, the others that were in their group, that they are no longer with. They too were separated in many ways. That particular event, for me, brings out the power of this particular scripture reading in seeing how the community of Christ is a part of who we are whenever Jesus is invoked, whenever Jesus is brought together in our midst. Um, I'm standing tonight in the hallway in the church in front of a mural that in a lot of ways represents the, the community of who we are as church family. And in the rooms around me are rooms in which groups have met, whether it's a quilters or Sunday school, whether it's small groups, study groups, or women's groups, or whoever, that are no longer right now. And while we as a church family have tried to do things online to, to be able to be connected with each other, it's not the same, is it? It's, at least it's not the same for me. These small groups are, are not meeting right now, by and large. And uh, most of us are not worshiping in our sanctuaries right now. And as a pastor, I know that it is hard. It's kind of lonely at some times, especially in times of worship or times when people would normally gather together. And even for lay people, people who have come up to me and say to me, gosh, I sure miss not being together. It is a time of loss. And yet, one of the things that I think today's, the, the scripture reading from, uh, from the 24th chapter of Luke tells us is that it's not a matter of just being in worship on Sunday morning. We can experience a community together whenever we realize it. As a matter of fact, I think perhaps maybe now more than ever might be the opportunity for each one of us as Christians and as followers of Jesus the Christ to realize the church doesn't just happen on Sunday morning. It is whenever we gather together in his name, two or three or more. And it doesn't necessarily mean in person. Could be online, could be through the email, could be uh, a passing notice to each other in the community. It could be through letter or any other way. Community happens in the ways in which we invoke Jesus in our lives. I invite you to join with me in prayer together. Spirit of God, in these moments in which we feel so separated from each other as church families, as groups in our own communities in which we live, we pray that your abiding presence and power in the risen Christ might, might be that glue and bonding agent that holds us together, that realizes that we are a people of yours, that while we may be desperate from each other right now, that common bond of faith is what 
ultimately brings us together from our exile. We give thanks, O oh God, for that Easter faith that allows us to, to manage the evening of darkness so that we may arise again, risen with the hope of coming back together as your people. For it is in that same spirit of the risen Christ in which we pray. Amen. Hi, I'm Angie from the Darlington and Fayette United Methodist Churches, and this evening I am lamenting the loss of going out. But yet, Psalm 103 keeps ringing in my head. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems you your life from the pit, and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And yet, it's hard to do that when we can't go anywhere, right? Oh, I miss sitting around the table with my friends and enjoying a cup of coffee and just laughing about life. And I miss going out in the world and, and, and going like to polls and like thumbing through the clearance racks, right? And just picking out something fun and you know you didn't need it and for $2.34, you say you can get it anyway. <laughs> oh, I remember uh, being on vacations and shopping and walking through busy markets and, and seeing the world in color. And I think what I miss the most right now is that I don't get to see the world in all its colors. I miss the newness of each day by seeing what's out there in this world, because I'm not out there in this world. I'm home. Safe at home, they say, right? And I believe it. But it doesn't mean that I don't long for things that I can't have. One of the best times that my husband and I have together is sitting across the table from each other and sharing in a meal that neither of us cooked and neither of us is going to clean up. <laughs> and we don't do that right now. I am sad at this loss, and it may seem trivial, especially with all the much bigger losses going on out there, but it's still a loss in my life, and so I claim that this night. I claim that I miss going out, and I miss shopping, and I miss seeing the world's newness each day, and yet I will still say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. This is hymn 560, Help Us Accept Each Other, all four verses.
Good evening. Well, it certainly is evident that during this time of pandemic, we have all lost. We have lost many things that perhaps we'd even taken for granted before this time. The one thing, however, that we cannot lose is hope. Psalm 33, beginning with verse 18, we read these words, Truly the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. These are unprecedented times, times that perhaps we've not seen in our lifetime. But the one thing that we have is hope. And we can have that hope because we have placed our trust in one who is greater than all of our troubles. And yes, hope is essential to life itself. We need to have that hope that we can go forward from here, one day at a time, one step at a time always placing our trust in a God who is above all of our circumstances. This message of hope was foundational to the very preaching of Jesus during his three years of ministry here upon the earth. Many of the stories and the parables were meant to bring hope to a people who seemingly had none people who were being oppressed by their Roman government, a people who often went day to day not looking forward to the next day, but looking forward to these words that they heard of Jesus, words that gave them a sense of hope. In the Gospel of Matthew, for instance, in this 15th chapter, we read the story of Jesus curing many people. Beginning in verse 29, after Jesus had left that place, he went and passed along the Sea of Galilee, and he went up on a mountain where he sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, the maimed, the blind, the mute, and many others. They put them at his feet, and he cured them. When they saw the mute speaking, the maimed whole and the lame walking, the blind seeing, and they praised the God of Israel. Jesus brought hope even to those who had little reason to hope in this life. And I believe that our hope today is based upon that foundation of Jesus. So as we go forward in these days ahead, certainly we look forward to a time where this pandemic is defeated and our lives are returned to normal. But let us remember that our hope is not based on our circumstances. Our hope is based on God. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and awesome God, we who have gathered here today do lament the losses that we have suffered. And yet we know, Lord, that we have hope. We have hope because we have placed our eternal trust in you. Give to those who grieve a sense of that hope. Give to those who have lost a sense of purpose. And Lord, to each one of us, Place within our hearts your Holy Spirit that we too might feel the love 
of all of the people that are reaching out to each other during this time. The love that is needed, Lord, no matter what our circumstances. Give us, indeed, our daily bread as we go forward from here. For all of this we pray in Jesus' name. story in the Gospel of Luke tells us that after a long day, Jesus invites the disciples, his team, to, to enter into a boat and cross the lake to the other side. Apparently Jesus was so tired that he soon fell asleep in the back of the boat. The story goes on to say that all of a sudden a storm picks up and it become so dangerous that the disciples were fearful that the, the boat might sink and they woke Jesus. And in that moment, Jesus then was able to calm the storm. The disciples were in awe. Well, we're in a storm today. And it's incredible to think how challenging these economic times can be for us. I'm at a lot across from our church, Sugar River United Methodist Church in Verona where several businesses were taken down in preparation for something in the future, but it just seemed to symbolize um, some of the struggle we're going through currently. Um, I don't know if you know that earlier this week, unemployment insurance claims in the United States soared past three million. I mean, in comparison to uh, the Great Recession in, in 2009 of 665,000, it's incredible that number. But around the world, economies are, are experiencing the same kinds of struggles. In fact, uh, David Bluestein, a professor of counseling psychology at Boston College, said this is going to be a global pandemic of unemployment. He says, I call it a crisis within a crisis. These financial challenges are, are crushing and, and this storm just seems relentless. And we want to be mindful today of those who are, are dealing with unemployment or underemployment because of the COVID-19. Psychologists tell us that losing a job is often equates to the grief of losing a loved one. It's dramatic. We understand ourselves through our employment so often. And be able to have to tell our children or our parents or our family or friends we want to be mindful of those who are working through this grief, who are lamenting the loss of work. I'm also aware of the fact that some of us are just grieving dealing with work because maybe we're forced to a new setting. Maybe we're um, you know, in a medical profession and having to deal with masks and distancing and it makes work hard and you're dealing with vulnerability. Or maybe you're working at home and you, your children are trying to take classes. Maybe you're just struggling because it's hard to go back to that desk another time. You're frustrated. You know, maybe you're just working the challenges of feeling the work that you're doing is valued. These are hard and difficult times. So my prayer is that God would calm the storms in our life. But you know what's, what's interesting in that story is is when they woke Jesus and he called the storm. He says, he asked the disciples, well, where's your faith? And I'm thinking, well, Jesus, we, we just woke you up because we believe that you could save us. I wonder if Jesus isn't talking about their faith in God. Maybe he's wondering why they don't have more faith in themselves. Maybe God believes in you and I, even in this storm. And that God is present. I mean, we call the Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us, present. Maybe we're struggling because we're wondering, why is God seemingly asleep in the back of the boat? Can I trust a silent God? And this is a message of, yes, we can. That there is still hope. And so my prayer for all of you dealing with unemployment or underemployment or just stresses of work and family that in these economically challenging times, we trust in a God to calm our storm. May we trust in a God who can be with us. We may feel that strength, encouragement, the support of your community in this challenging time.
and all the poor and powerless, and all the lost and lonely, and all the thieves will come confess, and know that you are holy. And all the hearts who are content And all who feel unworthy And all who were with nothing left Will know that you are holy And all will see Shout it, go on and scream it from the mountains, go on and tell it to the masses, you are God, oh we will shout Shout it out and we will shout it. Go on and 
Hello, my name is Pastor Brianna Ilene. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm the pastor at Trinity Madison. Um, behind me, you can see all these ribbons, and this is what our church has done to represent the people in Wisconsin who died from COVID-19. We, as of today, we're, we are, have over 1,200 people who've died, and there are more who continue, especially as cases rise. In this time, we remember all those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, friends, family members, all the people that have been lost in our communities. And we recognize that this pandemic has not hit all communities evenly. It has hit black and brown communities the hardest. And so we lift up all of these communities in prayer, lifting up these people, these lives that have been lost, knowing that God surrounds the families and the friends who mourn, but mourning the lives that left us too soon. So let us pray. Holy God, we know that you sit with us in our mourning. We lift up each and every person that each ribbon represents in the family and friends and community that has a whole left because of the person who died too soon. We pray for your peace, for your love, for your comfort, for all those who mourn in this time. In your name we pray, amen. <laughs> 